today's resource person, Dr. Prashant Viji. He is the Associate Professor and Head of the Department of English, R. Shankar Memorial, SNDP Yogam College, Koilandi. He is also a research guide. And my association with Prashant is now more than 20, 22 years. I have seen Prashant go from an, a, a literature scholar, and now I should also uh, term him as an ELT scholar. Uh, he never uh, fails to stop learning, and today his topic is very similar, out of the box learning. So he's going to give us a few bits of knowledge on out of the box learning and innovative trends in online education. Happy to welcome Dr. Prashant. Dr. Prashant, yeah, yeah. over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Premanand. I'm very grateful to uh, the, both the colleges, St. Joseph's College, Devagiri and Delisa College. Of course, uh, both the colleges uh, stay very close to my mind with respect to the spaces they provide and also with people uh, who are associated with that. And uh, when Dr. Premanand mentioned about the webinar for the first time, especially on online education. I mean, I was, I re, I was really wondering because uh, whatever a person, a teacher could do in the realm of online education or teaching, learning activity online, uh, Dr. Premanand has done almost everything. Of course, he started a YouTube channel. We together work for that. We have uh, been catering the entire student populace of uh, Calicut University with our uh, channel. And whatever we could do, I mean, I'm just putting into uh, my paper what actually we have done. Or rather, this is also a pointer to what is going to come in the future. Maybe what we understand is that when, as an as a introduction to my presentation, I would just like to draw your attention to one of the articles that was published recently, I mean, three, four months back, by Anish Sri Krishna, Chief Executive Officer of Times Professional Learning, and this is the first statement of his article. I'm just quoting him. Online learning presents the opportunity to offer excellence in scale to millions in India. See, India as a country, unlike other developed countries, we have a very big issue, a problem, that of proximity. Uh, as you understand, when uh, my when we were children, or maybe 50 to 60 years back, even Calicut city never could could host a person with a graduation degree. Even Christian College, Malabar Christian College, which is the earliest in the city, was a institution only with pre, uh, I mean, pre-degree or something like intermediate course. If you want to graduate yourself, you have to move to Madras minimum. So proximity has been a big issue in India, especially in a state of Kerala, which is further among the other states, I think Kerala is much advanced, but still we have a problem. And when we were children, we had to travel at least 30, 40 kilometers to have a graduation or post-graduation. So I studied in a college in Gallicate. Many of uh, my friends in those days had to travel about 30, 40 kilometers. Now the situation has drastically changed. We have institutions, at least uh, with the government program, we have at least one college, higher education institute in every constituency that we have, 140 constituency, we have a college. Of course, whether you get the desired course is a different question. We, in no college can offer you all the courses, naturally. So what has been the solution to this particular issue? I think post-COVID situation, when we, when we look back to the COVID situation, we just understand that in India, the situation has been quite different because this online education, you just need a connectivity, that's all, nothing else. So in millions of India could be, people in India could be given quality education. See, we have an excellent college, maybe in Calicut, or maybe in Kochi, or Trivandrum, or maybe in Madras. So if you want to have a learning, you have to travel all the way to that particular college, be there, and then get education. This online education has redefined that particular activity. Now you can even listen to a Harvard University professor speaking online live. And you can even have interaction with him, which we could never think of in times of the past. So the challenge now, 
of course though we are much advanced challenge is to deliver the promise that's a big issue uh, we have been doing this particular online activity for a very long time but the effect of that activity so how how far this is effective of course i think uh, we are in a teething stage only we have never been advanced because I, i i would like to outline the the course of action that is going to come in the future there i think at towards the end we can have another discussion on what would, what is in store for future so at this point of time i just would like to say that we are on a threshold of a new kind of a learning and perhaps the the colleges are back to normal see now offline classes have started but this online education online activity would definitely stay it will go in hand in hand i mean i'll be coming to that as a next point see e learning as a concept was first introduced in the late 90s as all of us know and it has been accepted as a dominant mode of learning but in india the adoption of online learning was much slower we had to have a covid pandemic situation to understand the significance or importance of this particular activity and still i am i am very sure still we are not so dependent on this education system we would always like to go back to our classroom situation so we i think have not absolutely explored this particular event or this particular activity india is very unique in many aspects especially with we have 700 million internet users which no other country can imagine except china spread over urban and rural area with a market size of us 2.28 billion by 25 by 2025 so such a enormous country with enormous potential so why don't we tap all these resources down to our higher education system is a question and artificial intelligence and machine learning these are the two aspects we we are going to discuss little further they op- provide the opportunity to personalize scale and automate current e learning mechanisms so can you ever think of one teacher one student situation with an ai it is possible it is going to be possible in another 2 to 3 years you will have apps and uh, maybe certain devices where you can g- get a 24 hour assistance on learning meaning if you want to uh, know the explanation of a text if you want to experiment a writing if you wanted to have a speech on that you will get a trainer a kind of an assistant like alexa what we have been doing so ai would bring up this kind of personalized education and once education is personalized i think our age old problem that having of course english teachers all in kerala for example we suffer a very big issue that is our ratio student teacher ratio is almost 120 to 1 because science teachers are a bit lucky they may have 40 or 50 but still that's a higher number 20 15 to 20 is ideal number in developed countries in india we are trying to make it at 30 is to 1 but when ai and machine learning develop naturally we will have one is to one which is a great revolution i think or going to be <clears throat> ai can be used to generate reports for programs initiated by institutes analyze learners shortcoming and interpret data see all this teaching learning and evaluation i'm using different words generate report for programs initiated by colleges or institutions analyze learners shortcoming that is evaluation and interpret data to offer a tailor made learning experience see if you can spot the issue with the student either l s r or w what is his problem or her problem right and if you can provide certain remedies resolution uh, some certain tips can be provided him or her to improvise definitely this system is going to work and ai can even go far as creating intelligent learning assistants 
that is also another very big time feature that is going to come who can provide timely guidance and counseling when which when teachers cannot i said teachers cannot be meaning te not teachers will not teachers will definitely give but at what point of time so i am available for my students only between a stipulated time maybe we are 9:30 to 3:30 or something like that because we have devices now i am also available during other time as well but that is not a guarantee suppose a student asks me a doubt at 9 o'clock at night or maybe 11:30 at night i may not be online i might reply at times or usually i might reply the next day but on the other hand if you have an ai assistant that particular character will definitely answer you at any point of time you like he or she will tell you exactly what is the what is your issue so this is going to last and data usage for average indian is 12 gb it is the highest rate of mobile data consumption in the world and i am very sure that all the 12 gb out of this 12 gb only very 2 uh, to 3 percent is used for education the rest is used for watching uh, videos and other activities despite this it remains unexplored territory for traditional school and college e learning modules so if 10% of this 12 gb which is going to be taken uh, raised to maybe 20 or 25 in another 2 to 3 years if 10% of that can be utilized for educational tools then i think it will come up, bring about a wonderful result naturally micro learning is another uh, i'll be explaining it further in the next slide that is explored by apps now that is it involves a learning new information in smaller chunks at a time instead of having a long lecture of 1 hour you split it into 10 minutes or 5 minutes module of three or four components that is easier for a student to understand and it is easier to remember so what is in store what is in store is micro learning or which is another words it can be described as nano learning it involves providing student with information smaller accounts shorter period learning in short burst is proven to increase our ability to take and retain information rather than watching a long video and from our experience from myself and we have been i mean as i told you we have been doing a youtube channel and uh, dr prayamanand is very specific in telling me that prashant if you do a longer video people would not watch they watch only for the first 10 or 15 minutes and we have maximum people watching for the first 15 minutes then there is a gradual decline meaning people are not however important the session is however important your uh, topic is general tendency is to watch it only for 10 or 15 minutes so this is the importance of micro or nano learning by providing them with a small pellet like information we increase their productivity so ultimately what counts is how the student comes out of out with all this information and the four important keys of nano learning in classroom number one identify the students needs and 20 students or maybe 40 students will have 40 different needs set the learning objective again what is normal in colleges is that we set the same learning objective for everybody we set the same uh, we under the pretext that we think it is all the students need needs are the same but here you can have a variation choose the content whether it is video apps or podcast whatever it is and then uh you can keep it in short that's a watch word keep everything in short online schooling this is a new concept that has been in store in many of the developed countries it is estimated that online schooling is likely to be a 2 million billion us dollar project in india by 2021 according to study conducted by kpmg and google but as far as the available data uh, can be believed we are seeing a blending technology which is um, uh, now under discussion blended learning instruction to create a high grade and personalized curriculum for kindergarten to 12th standard so this has been in discussion for some time personalized curriculum now what we have been doing is that english for example which uh, i myself and dr prayman and then subin we all teach english is same for all students doing the first year degree program so 125000 students 
registered for Kerala Calicut University will have to do the same syllabus, same book, same course, same examination, same evaluation. Instead, if we can personalize the curriculum by making them or by giving them choice of accepting and rejecting, then I think it will produce wonderful results. See, for a BCom student, he can have uh, or she can have her own priorities from different from a physics student or from a Malayalam literature student. So if they can be given a personalized curriculum, I think uh, the overall output will be much better. Online schools driven by K2 steadily gain popularity as they blend conventional teaching with new technologies and digital resources. If the same can be implemented another after two to three years down the line in higher education, then this particular change will come. Mode of examination will change. Everything will change drastically. So uh, that is going to be the ultimate turning point with respect to higher education, I think. I mean, it is go going to come and not at materialize. So it is all assumption or maybe a kind of a, a projection that we are making. Concept-based versus experiential kind of a learning. Collaborative exercises, role play, field work and project-based learning help students to develop key skills and be prepared for careers in the future. See, one problem which we normally identify with our students is that they are good at learning, they know certain things, but they don't have anything of their own. They have by hearted or they have read and understood certain things from the books or their knowledge is quite bookish rather than having a skill which can be utilized or which can be used in their job place. So there has been an increase in the trend of learning to shift and transfer from machines to cell phones. That is another important point we would like to highlight. That is a uh, majority of, I mean, if you take India as a classic example or Kerala as a classic example, we have one mobile phone per person, maybe more. But when it comes to laptop, I think we might be happy with maybe 30, 35 percent having a laptop. And if laptop and uh, maybe uh, another devices like a desktop or maybe a tab, it may come up to maybe 35 or 40 percent. But when it comes to mobile, it is 100 plus actually. So the future lies in learning through mobile phones. So mobile phone is going to play a very key role in the future with respect to studies. Another very important area that is going to develop, because I, I can't say it is going to develop, it has already been implemented by we ourselves have implemented gamification with Kahoot, I think uh, five or six years ago in Malavagastang only, that's what I remember. And gamification theory in education is that learners learn best when they are having fun. So that is a, all of us know that it, easiest method of learning is through games. That is effectively implemented in schools. Gamification learning involves game-based elements, point scoring, peer competition, teamwork, score table, etc. etc. They assimilate new information and test the knowledge. So it is great fun actually to play this kind of a game on one hand. On another hand, it gives you a lot of new information and it is definitely uh, an area, a testing uh, center where different skills like audio, video, podcasting, all this is clubbed together. You get a altogether new kind of an experience. Uh, from a uh, question paper, traditional question paper, which can only be answered in writing, which is again in writing and can be answered in writing. Gamification has changed the attitude of learning. So what we have seen from our own experience is that even the uh, student who actually scores very minimum marks comes up and participate with great enthusiasm in games. 
and he or she will be quite interested and even i have seen uh, certain students making excellent comeback they they almost challenge the best students in the class in games maybe if i have the exam in the traditional method these students will not score much so uh, this is how it has been going to and enhances attendance and definitely if there is a game that is going to be played a test that is going to be a game mification then i think 100% attendance can be ensured right because it, it gives them a altogether different dimension now student assessment using ai this is already familiar I, i'll just uh, brush through evaluation is now very subjective and i mean i have been uh, teaching for the last 30 years or more and i am very sure that the same i who evaluates papers in the morning is not the person who does it in the afternoon and is not the person who does it in the evening because my enthusiasm my state of mind is subject to change and my personal inconveniences my personal whims and fancies everything will have a effect on my evaluation not that i would make a big difference no but even then minor changes are definitely going to happen because i am doing it in a very subjective position whereas if ai is given this charge i think valuation becomes so objective but of course there is another issue that uh, I, i can value something and make an assessment whether this is right or wrong but whether ai can do the same mechanism in in, a, in the same fashion as a teacher a human being does is a, again a questionable thing but definitely for uh, short multiple choices and short questions i think ai can now itself with this limited resources it can do extremely well ai programs uh, offer a valuable insight into performance of students in especially in discussion and other activities during the traditional manual evaluation there are chances of bias and this definitely play a major role everywhere that is why calicut university would uh, make uh, a person from outside the university to set the question paper because of bias and even uh, we normally will not university will not allow the examiner to value the papers of his own students definitely and uh, oh, you would never have the identity of a student being disclosed before your evaluation just to keep you away from the biases but ai will never have the bias right it will it will be a full proof kind of a activity now shift towards non conventional this is uh, what is going to happen or it has i actually started happening right that is uh, the biggest trend is to choose which course to learn for the student so uh, even i think uh, some 10 years before or maybe 20 years before everybody knew the winning formula you know that if this course is taken this is going to happen if you take this particular course this is the future you will be getting this kind of a salary this kind of a career that is for sure but now things have changed you can never say what is going to be the big hit tomorrow we live in a world of confusion actually with respect to higher studies and for that matter we cannot advise a student that this is going to be a way this is going to have future so everything may have a future every student who takes any course in the world have the equal chance to be successful so india is long described as an economy which guarantees uh, graduates concentrate to become doctors lawyers accountants and engineers and out of this i think in kerala we have been training all our students to be doctors and engineers and we have sufficient number of doctors and engineers now now another courses are coming up what are the courses there are youtubers and social media influencers who are independent players who success has opened up different sets of opportunities which earlier was not imagined ni your child can be a youtuber and a very successful youtuber he or she can be an influence just by posting one twitter one tweet the share market will go down 
or up. Okay. So this kind of influence you can exert if you are a social media influencer. Today, students are looking to explore skills like video editing, design thinking, fashion, marketing, PR, communication, and other niche fields such as e-commerce, hospitality, food and catering, data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence, even specialization in edutech programs, cryptocurrency, crypto programs. There are a number of such programs are coming up. So all these programs are new. All these programs have established itself because of this new change. So we no longer cherish or we no longer want our students to follow conventional courses. Instead, what we ask for is to make a blend of different things. So, so I mean, all the good universities or best universities in the world are now offering dual degrees, dual degree courses, and they ask the students to do an extra course from MOOC that we are going to discuss that later. MOOC programs, right? So what I'm trying to say is that now the graduation, for example, even Calgate University has uh, recognized the importance of learning something out of the box. So they have introduced what you call open course, meaning a physics student will go to Malayalam department and learn something there. Or a commerce student will go to a computer science department or any other department and learn something from there. And a chemistry student would come to English department to learn cinema. So what I'm trying to say is that courses cutting across horizontal mobility, you might have been familiar with that. This horizontal mobility, the courses with that. So earlier we have uh, seen people who actually sacrifice their passion and went for a particular course. Maybe you have films like Three Idiots were one of the characters, Three Idiots. He wanted to do photography, but his father was so adamant that he should go for engineering. So he came and joined in the engineering program. So now that kind of a thing happens. Whereas if that film happens now, the student who is doing engineer can definitely do a parallel course on photography, which is possible. And universities encourage that. In my student days, university was very particular that I must not do a course other than what I am pursuing. No two courses can be should be done at the same time. That is why they take TC from us. Transfer certificate is detained in college because this child should not go for another course. If TC is given back to me, I, I might uh, submit it elsewhere and do another course. So no simultaneous education was the policy when I was a student 25 years back, or maybe 35 years back. But now they are so liberal. They come to understand that students can do multiple courses at the same time because they are skilled. Students are so skilled they can do multiple courses with no comparison in between. Something like food technology and photography. Right? Or something like machine learning and literature. They can do something like, like that. So e-learning is customizable. But biggest advantage of e-learning, of course, unlike the traditional learning when we make a comparison, the traditional education system binds students to a course for many years. Usually a graduate course takes three years in India and maybe in uh, elsewhere it is four years. It is hard for them to switch to learn other things. Normally, he or she has to glue into this particular course for the complete four years. Online education provides you option to customize. As I said you earlier, if a student is doing literature, he can simultaneously do cookery. Uh, he can learn uh, how to make, how to be a chef, he learn photography, and even he can learn yoga as a course. So it is customizable. You need to figure out career goals and start learning the skills to keep you on the way. If you are, if that, what is your passion, you, you can definitely create your passion and also you can set your careers in such a way so that you can definitely think of that. So if you're learning marketing, you can definitely learn a co do a course in an online platform on marketing basics of marketing or advanced marketing, whatever, whatever. So by the time you finish your degree, you have another three certificates with you 
which are provided by some of the leading universities in the world. So the same student who lives in India in a rural area, doing a course in his local area can simultaneously do a course in from the most prestigious institutions in the world. This is an explanation to that. One can learn marketing by taking online courses and by various universities in the world, learn graphic design along with marketing. If he's interested to learn e-learning to customize a curve on one's needs. So whatever is your passion, even your wildest passion can be explored. This is one of the biggest advantage. You learn it from world-class experts, not nation class, not even uh, local, but with world-class experts. With the rise of online education, experts are in plenty. My son, who is actually attending the final year of his engineering uh, course, he often used to say, tell me, that whenever exams are near, he would listen to all the best professors in the world because it's available. But 30, 40 years before, or maybe 20 years before, you never have a chance to listen to any professor other than yours. So there was no media available. So world-class experts from various fields, they have uploaded certain things. And he used to tell me that Indians are the best teachers. Maybe true. Maybe because Indian teachers would know the condition of an Indian student, that's why. So we'll have to inquire the same with a student in America or maybe UK to understand whether it's right or wrong. So my son always say that he he's of the opinion that Indian teachers are the best teachers in the world. Maybe true, I don't know. E-learning allows a renowned expert to broadcast their messages over the internet. So if you are a good teacher, if, if, because I have uploaded uh, maybe 30, 40 videos on YouTube pertaining to the portions uh, prescribed by Calicut University for BA uh, English Literature course. Dr. Premanand, of course, uh, has wider appeal when he has been trying to do something which is normally impossible for others to do. Uh, something like a phonetic drill. He has been practicing a short video with, uh, with intention of teaching phonetics to students. So maybe he would bring in all kinds of information from outside, outside the world, outside the world, in the sense that uh, one, one of the video would, would, would be about the aeroplanes. Another video will be how to make uh, a dish like maybe a, a tomato fry, something like that. So he, he comes up with all kinds of different kind of activities, right? Knowledge, skills, lessons with students. E-learning allows renowned experts to broadcast their message over internet. They don't need to visit every classroom to teach. They just have, need to have a camera. They just need to have a classroom to record and then post in the internet. They can pack their teachings inside the course and distribute. There is no question of writing a book or distributing the book. They can just do it over the internet. The internet is open. And whoever is interested will definitely watch, right? Optimization of learning. E-learning employs you to choose your courses, space, time, and even instructor. This is the biggest advantage. You can decide your course, even your time, even your teacher can be chosen, right? This particular facility is now available in the US. US, you can, even in UK and US and other developed countries, you can choose your instructor. And you are supposed to give courses to students. And know if your number of uh, students uh, who opt for your course is less than you stand at the threshold of losing your job. So that is the kind of uh, practice in developed countries. But we don't have such threats now for the right men, for the time being. In short, you are in charge of your learning curve. So you can finish it in your own pace. You can do it in one day, one week, or even a month that you can decide. Move fast or slow, review your video lectures. All video lectures will have its own question answer session or maybe a evaluation session where you record and listen and maybe you record your responses and send it back audio book repeatedly with a slack of learning to optimize the overall page so wherever you go wherever uh, pro whatever programs you do you are getting evaluated in a altogether differently 
Trends in online education show that flexibility is the primary reason why people accept. Flexibility is the major reason why people accept this kind of a course. Further, students study course material outside class and utilize classroom time to reinforce their learning. One advantage, of course, this can also be done in regular classroom. Well, however hard fashion we say our children to read and come, they never do that. But I have not seen many students reading and coming to the class. They will all wait for me to read first, then only they uh, do the reading. That, that is the situation in uh, our area, maybe in a city area, urban area, things may be slightly different. Clear doubts, engage in discussion with the instructor. And engaging in a discussion is actually extinct now. No class, the last five years that I've been teaching, no student ever asked a serious kind of a doubt. There is a very limited interaction in the classroom. Uh, there are various reasons to that. Of course, if that is not our uh, cup of tea for the right time, um, for the time being, so I'm not spending much time on that. But still, that is the situation. But in online activity, you can you have number of diverse ways of asking questions. You can post a podcast. You can type and post. Even you can, uh, if you have no idea about that particular topic at that point of time, you can go back, uh, read it again, listen to it again, then post a comment or a doubt after some time. That is possible. The hybrid model of e-learning actually brings to effect the best of both worlds, classroom and virtual. <clears throat> Higher institutions are expanding their online programs. Now, I come to a very important development that is going to happen very shortly. That the best higher education. I just shared a post with Dr. Premanand today morning saying that central government has announced that all institutions accredited with within first hundred of uh, NIRF or consistently graded with A plus or a double plus in the NAC accreditation, they will be granted permission to run degree courses online. So yesterday I was, when I was preparing this particular slide, I never knew that this kind of a thing will develop this morning. The first thing that I noticed very surprisingly is that government has already granted permission to Institutions like Devery College, which is uh, ranked 60 in the NIRF ranking, they will definitely go for an online course, degree course, next year, because the government has come up with that. So it is, this sector is opening up, flexibility and convenience. I, I don't think people would wait for any university to enroll themselves. Instead, they will join for their degree college course, because one is that, it finishes on time and the AI, they'll definitely be using an AI. They get assistance 24 into seven and all materials will be available on YouTube. You get all kinds of assistance. So this gives a greater flexibility and convenience for even people who work, people who are in faraway places, maybe somebody from Gulf or somebody from Europe wanted to do a course in Kerala would find it very difficult because of the time zone difference. So all this is going to be overcome. And the work-life balance that online education brings a triumphs of our traditional systems. So we initially, when I was a student, there was evening college, which starts from maybe the four o'clock in the evening and goes up to seven or 7.30. Such a thing. So it was there in Caligate. So those who work in Calicut can go and attend the course there. But if a person works some 40 or 50 kilometers away from Calicut, he or she cannot do that. But online education gives a solution to that. And e-learning continues to grow. Higher education institutions will expand their online curriculum. If Devagri is not coming up, definitely some other colleges will come. Because they will definitely come, I know. Meaning, uh, next year, you find at least 10 colleges in Kerala who are rated high in NIRF and uh, NAC rankings. They will come up with at least five courses minimum. And this will bring more variety and quality. And even when they come, they don't 
follow the kind of a syllabus that is going now they will offer a course which is actually ahead of its times they will give and give a combination where uh, a student who is going to take this particular course will definitely have an upper hand from other traditional students so this is going to happen however it should be noted that online education will be complementary to classroom program but i don't say that online education would surpass or would complement or would substitute the classroom education no classroom education has its own merit no doubt about that actually classroom education is actually a feeling but what i am trying to say is that this is also going to grow along with that not that one would grow at the expense of other no there is a new shift from a classroom traditional ex to that and majority of the students who attend the classroom would go for this that kind of a argument is that I am what i am trying to make and mooc mooc is coming up in large number and coursera is a uh, platform which many of you are familiar they reveal that they garnered 10 million enrollments in 30 days a 644% of increase in the 2019 figures 10 million enrollments in 30 days imagine this is possible no institution in the world can accommodate 10 million students in any campus except online similarly udacity received more student signups in one week of march than last quarter combined this is all information that i gathered from internet massive open online courses that is the expansion of mooc then just free and low cost alternative to traditional education it is low cost and also free they provide more value to learners and learners have the freedom to master different micro credentials in the form of, the majority of you are quite familiar udacity has already partnered with google and at&t so you find tie ups coming up between these platforms and other giants like google a number of moocs they focus on deliberate subjects are in demand skills so whatever is skill demanding they have actually uh, worked on that and i think my time is uh, getting up prem i will just finish in maybe 2 to 3 minutes Uh, modern learners are increasingly agile in equipping themselves with the latest technology i think uh, in my college uh, i've been using technology no doubt about that but my students are better users my students of this generation I mean, my uh, new graduate students this inspires them to leverage technology for learning but i don't think our students are using too much of technology for learning if that happens then it is going to be a great change today students want to adopt self service approach to education a kind of a buffet they would like to prefer a kind of a buffet rather than traditional meal they want to steer the career direction choosing the content they want to consume and this is where mobile learning truly ma matches the learners needs and modern learners are eager to educating themselves as quickly as possible they wanted to have uh, get the degree as quickly as possible so in a day or in five days you can they get a certificate of course which actually would have been would have taken uh, 30 days you can just finish in five days no issue and students watch a short instructional video before performing a task to understand the thought process so there are number of uh, videos available just giving you a, a, a curtain riser or maybe giving a hint at what you are going to do next and just like a trailer of a movie you have a trailer of this particular course and once you see that you find it attractive you go watch the movie similarly if you find it attractive you go and do the course oer this is another phenomenon textbooks are always pricey and in college students spend about uh, the $1290 this is a statistics from america we don't have a statistics in india uh, with respect to this a college board survey says that 1290 is the cost of the textbook whereas open educational resources they are more familiar we also do that we we don't buy a book now from amazon also we would look up for the article on internet which is almost free 
so open educational resources are coming up and at one point of time textbooks will be totally replaced by this oer content or partly will be replaced by oer content and this trend will definitely continue this i think is one of the effect of this kind of technology based education on traditional classroom education and even now i find that in some some time back last year when we were actually down and closed with uh, covid situation majority of my students uh, began using pdf formats of the textbook because they can't go out and buy a textbook because uh, shops were closed so they many of them I, i remember using pdf and this is one of the changes that has actually happened and this is the fi- my final point is that online communities and new classrooms we as for this particular webinar we have started a new classroom and this classroom discusses only what is going to happen in this seminar so we have certain new classroom and new communities coming up literature students will have a community engineering students will have another community so you have whatever is your interest you join that particular community so this is the polarization that happens with respect to education so whatever your interest in you join there and form and you get lot of information there whatever is new in that particular area you get the information online communities foster relation between students and overall world so we don't no more tie up with malayali malayali or malayali tamil like that we instead to tie up with anybody in the world so this is the kind of a uh, ratio that this education has gone into and home schooling is a new concept again uh, flexibility of online education convince that parents and kids can learn from the kitchen table so you can also think of family learning all the f- five members or four members in the family enrolling for the particular course right this is what is called home schooling home itself is turned to a school a wide availability of internet personal learning and cost effectiveness makes it if there is a free course on cookery all the four uh, father mother and daughter son everybody can learn and everybody can implement it's easy so the perks and wide range of knowledge available etc unique combination of classroom and online tutoring physical classroom are not going to disappear that is not my argument but they will definitely have to assimilate so many new things from the online or onslaught of this online coaches it will be fascinating to witness how schools and colleges modify teaching structures and in- inculcate online education thus merging the best of the two worlds this is what we are looking for how these two best things will merge and form into a new kind of an education which is going to be a reality shortly thank you